Hello friends, it's Ray. I have been asked by several of you guys to make a tutorial for this fun little friend, which I called Oil Spill. Um, and I just have to say right off the bat, I kind of have a secret that I need to tell you about this um, piece. Please don't hate me for this. Um, there is no GLSL involved in this at all. It, this is just tops only. Um, really, it's it's a testament to the power of what just comes built in Touch Designer. Um, going to be one of the smallest networks you ever build. So that's the secret. This is actually one of my favorite things, uh, as you guys all probably know, which is feedback. I am a feedback Fiend. I just love it. It is so powerful. It is such a fun thing. I'll dive right inside of this network here so that you can see what this is. Yeah, that this is it, you guys. <laughs> this is it. So um, we're going to get right into exactly what the settings are, but I just wanted to go right off the bat and say that. Okay, so I'm just going to I'm going to kill this so it's not taking up my thing. I'm going to make a new base. Uh, I, if you double click in the network, you can pull up the operator create dialog. So I'm going to grab a new base uh, and then I'm just going to dive right inside. So this is going to be really fast. The first thing that you're going to need is a noise top and that's it. So double click come into tops, search for noise. Beautiful. There she is. Okay. So I'm going to change some things in here. First of all, I'm going to set the period to two. Um, also, you can toggle these settings as you would like. I'm just going to show you exactly what I did for oil spill the first time um, so that you can get a sense of, of what that was. Period is going to equal two. I'm going to go to harmonics. I'm going to set them to seven. Many harmonics because I want it to be nice. And I'm, actually, I'll pull this up so that you can see it. I want it to be very grainy and have a lot of sort of differentiation there. Uh, then I'm going to go to the amplitude. I'm going to set to two so it's even more dramatic. There we go because we want to get really stark contrast and you'll see why as we build out the network. Then I'm going to turn monochrome off because I want color, mama. Yes, beautiful, gorgeous. Uh, then I'm going to come into my transform. I'm going to go to my translate in the Z parameter and I'm going to type a little tiny Python. It's just going to be abs, dot time, uh, abs time, sorry, capital T time dot seconds. And that's it. Ooh, I know that's kind of fast. It's kind of overwhelming to look at all of it right now, but trust me, you won't, it won't feel this fast once it's actually going. Then the last thing is we're going to come into the common page and we're going to set the reason resolution to 1024 by 1024. So the next thing I'm going to do is if I uh, right click or tap with two fingers on a trackpad off the output of my noise, I'm going to grab a transform, uh, pull up the dialog and make a transform. Then I'm going to do some things here. So I'm going to come into the TY parameter of this transform and I am going to write another little expression. It's going to be abs time, capital T dot seconds times what I put negative 0.4. Okay. The reason that it's going to be negative is because we want this to start moving down. Oh no, it disappeared. Ray, what happened? Okay. So the thing you're going to do to make it come back is you're going to come into tile and instead of zero, when you say extend, you're going to hit mirror. Wee, there she is. What that means is that if you ever translate your um, top off of out of the screen, like out of the range of the parameters, touch designer is just asking you in this page, like, what do you want me to do about that? Do you want me to just like stretch it out, like hold on to the edge, the last thing that I had and stretch it? Would you like me to just have it be zero when it's gone? Would you like me to repeat the same thing? So you can see there's the seam here, or would you like me to mirror it? And I'm going to say mirror because I don't want that seam. And I definitely want this texture. Like I don't want it to be stretched like that. So that's what we're going to do. So the next thing is we're going to get right into the feedback, you guys. So I'm going to double click, double tap here again. I'm going to grab some feedback. That's Nasha Krasiva Zievichka, our gorgeous girl. Uh, and then off of this feedback, the feedback loop is going to be first a transform. So let's grab that again. Beautiful. There she is. Okay. Uh, for this transform, the things I'm going to change, I'm going to change the scale to the magic number of 1.004 in the X and 1.007 in the Y. That's because I want kind of an uneven, like squishy, stretchy kind of a feeling because we liked what we liked about oil spill was that like weird goopy kind of a kind of an expansion um and so this is going to mean that it's going to slowly feel like it's growing that's what's going to give it that really organic like spreading like uncontrollable feeling right so we really like that so we're gonna do that um and then i'm going to change the pivot point actually from 
0.5 in the Y here to zero because I want it to pivot from the bottom of the image. If you guys remember an oil spill, I'll actually come turn this back on just for a second so that we can see it. Everything feels like it's coming from the ground, right? Like everything feels like it's, it's down here at the bottom. So if, if I was translating it from the center of the image, you would see it like stretching from there, which isn't what I want. I want it to be on the base, right? Okay. Then <sighs> this is it guys. This is the key to the whole thing. You're going to put an edge top in the center of your feedback loop. Okay. And you are going to have it comp over the input so that you can see the edge is happening to our, to our boy here. So you are going to set the strength and I will go back to explain why <laughs> later, but you're going to set the strength to kind of a weird thing, but this is the key that makes it look really goopy and cool. You're going to set the strength to another expression and the expression is math.sign and then in parentheses, so math.sign just means it's going to be a sine wave, sine function. Um, and then in the parentheses goes abs time, uh, ab, eh, b, z, z, time dot seconds times within the parentheses 0.2, then close the parentheses and then do point, multiply it again by 0.52. Great. So that's going to mean that uh, it's time seconds slowed down the 0.2. Um, times abs time dot seconds is going to slow the speed down and then this is going to say that the strength is only going to oscillate between uh, negative 0.52 and 0.52. Does this make sense? Because normally this function would result in a negative one to one guy so when we multiply it by 0.52 we get negative 0.52 to 0.52. Yeah? Beautiful. Uh, so this is toggling the strength. Actually, probably you can see it happening. The strength of the edge up and down. Yeah. See how it fades and then it fades more and it fades more and it fades more and it gets even smaller and sometimes it's gone completely. <laughs> uh, and then it starts coming back. See that? So that's fun. So that does mean that sometimes the edge value is going to be negative. Like this edge is going to be totally taken off within the feedback loop, which is fine because edge in a feedback loop is very powerful because as we know, a feedback loop means everything that happens within the feedback loop happens every frame. So again and again and again and again, that's why when you transform something and scale it even just a little bit in one frame, because you're doing it over and over again, it gives the feeling of constant expansion. It almost looks animated, right? So the edge is drawing the edge around every new image. Like every time the image gets overdrawn, it's like, and the edge of this and the edge of that and the edge of that and the edge of the new thing. So that's what gives it that like, bleh, like goopy expansion that we love. Right. Okay. Just a few more operators, guys. We're going to come out of off of the edge and we're going to grab a level. Mm -hmm. We are going to reduce the opacity barely. We're going to come here into post, do opacity. It's going to be 0 0.9955. Gorgeous. Um, just so that it's not like super duper overwhelming. Uh, and then after that, we're going to grab an HSV adjust. V adjust. There she is. Hello. Gorgeous. Uh, and we are going to set the saturation multiplier to again, just a little bit 1.1. That's just so that the contrast is a little bit starker. Cause again, we're interested in, you know, the edge top is determining the edge by the luminance. You can set this to different something, but the luminance, which is gonna, um, the, the HSV adjust is going to help the edge be more defined basically. Then the last thing to close the feedback loop is gonna, we're going to take a composite right here. Boom. I like to put it down so that I know that's the end of the feedback loop. We're going to composite the HSV over the transform. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to come out of this transform, plug that in as well. This is correct. It's not going to be multiply. That looks weird. It is going to be lighter color, beautiful. And then we're going to come out of here and we're going to set the feedback and we're going to say your target top is comp one. Boom. Blah. Look at that. Okay, so this is oil spill in color, right? Which I personally think still looks pretty cool. Like it's a little bright and overwhelming, but I do, I think, I think it's pretty. Like I like the girl, but um, the oil spill that we know and love that you guys are asking me about uh, is this next thing. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna just close this out. The last thing, the thing that makes it do the thing that's cool is you guessed it one more edge top and that is it we just take this edge top 
I am literally going to change nothing about this edge top. And that's it, guys. <laughs> there she is. So now you know how to do it. You can stop the video here. You can play with it on your own. Um, congratulations, by the way. And I'm just going to go through the reasons why these operators make it look this way in the feedback loop and then go into some more things that like if you want to change something very small it can have a big effect on the actual output if you guys want to like parameterize this for yourselves so going back to the edge the edge is a super powerful thing like if you see even in here if i turn the edge up it like disappears right like because it's it's happening too fast it's happening too rapidly so you want to kind of make it less strong to get this definition in here this like really beautiful stuff and so um even because you're putting another edge on at the end that is enough then the reason for this hsv adjust in here to to be upping the saturation you can see if you don't up it if you just have it if you uh, actually don't see that if i bypass this hsv adjust there's less definition between the lines so it's less visually interesting right that they kind of made some of the contrasty stuff go away and that's because the composite is set to lighter color and the edge is using the luminance value to determine where it should draw itself. So if I were to increase this value, we get even more contrast. So that's something you can play with if that's an effect you like. Um, also something that I wanted to say was that the version, the previous version that I posted on Instagram was a little bit different than this. It actually had another operator in here. It was another transform. The reason that I can't do this transformation within this transform is because the tile page, if you guys remember, has to be set to a different thing. It has to be set to zero, but I actually made the whole thing smaller. So I reduced it um, by 0.4 so that it would be a smaller little dude that was like diving down the center. Um, and I kind of like that look as well, but it, it did do this thing like on the edges where it kind of felt like th there was something cool happening here and then the edges were a little bit different. And so you can kind of offset that by also animating the rotate by doing abs time, oops, time dot seconds and then mod uh, 360. Um, actually, abs have a second, so I want it to spin a little bit faster. Times, I think it actually had to be like 100. Yeah. Um, and that makes it kind of swirly and goopy and fun. Um, so again, like there's really no limit to the things you could do with this. Also, if you want to have it be swirling, but you don't want to have it be small like that, you can just have it go back to one. Oop, stop. There. Like, that's kind of cool. I like that, right? So, uh, like, again... All of these things are just tools, right? Like all of this is just is just techniques that you can use to make literally whatever you want, right? It's it's limited only by your desires and your imagination. So this is just like a starting point for you guys to jump off and go forth and achieve your dreams and all that great stuff, right? So yes, I think that about wraps up this tutorial. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and thank you so much for your interest in this piece. Um, and please let me know what you would like to see next. Have a great day. You did an amazing job. Bye.